Okay, in this video, we'll do a couple more uh, practice problems. I'm just going to do two here with um, a trinomial um, multiplication, and then we'll move on and do some um, application problems with geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and just do number one to start with. So I'm going to distribute this 4x squared to each term in the second uh, polynomial here, which is a binomial. So 4x squared times 2x, 4 times 2 gives me 8. x squared times x to the first is x cubed. Then I have 4x squared times 5. 4 times 5 is 20. And then I just have x squared there. Then I'll distribute the negative 3x. So negative 3x times 2x would be negative 6x squared. Negative 3x times 5 would be negative 15x. Now this is a little different than the previous problems because now we're going to have to also distribute the 2. So we distribute the 4x squared up here. We distribute the negative 3x and then now I also have to distribute the 2. So 2 times 2x is 4x. And 2 times 5 is 10. So I distribute the 4x squared, the negative 3x, and also the 2. And then now I'll combine my like terms. So 8x cubed. I combine my quadratic terms there. 20x squared minus 6x squared is 14x squared. Then I combine these terms, negative 15x plus 4x is negative 11x. And then I have my constant of 10 there at the end. Okay, I'm going to do one more problem. This is the hardest type of problem we'll probably have on our, uh, in this chapter and on our test, a trinomial times a trinomial. So I'm going to start by distributing the 3x squared. 3x squared times 2x squared would be 6x to the fourth. 3 times 2 is 6. x squared and x squared is x to the fourth. 3x squared times x would be 3x cubed. Then when I distribute that to the negative 5, 3x squared times negative 5 is negative 15x squared. My next step would be to distribute the negative 4x. So negative 4x times 2x squared. Negative 4 times 2 would be negative 8. And I'm going to write that down here, and I'll explain why in just a second. x times x squared would be x cubed. All right. I personally, and you guys will see as I go through this problem, when I'm doing a trinomial times a trinomial, if I'm not doing box method, I like to write each distribution in its own individual row just because it makes it a little bit easier to add up your, your like terms in a minute, and you'll see what I mean when, when I'm done with this. But negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, x times x squared, x cubed. So now I distribute negative 4x times x would be negative 4x squared. Then negative 4x times negative 5 would be positive 20x. And I'm not done yet, though. I've only distributed the 3x squared and the negative 4x. I still have to distribute the 1. So 1 times 2x squared is 2x squared. 1 times x is 1x. And then 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. So you can see how I've done this. As I've gone, I did the first distribution of 3x squared. Then this line was the distribution of negative 4x. And then the last line was the distribution of 1. And as I did it, I kind of lined up my like terms and columns. So that way, when I go to combine them, it's easier to see where your like terms are located. So 3x cubed minus 8x cubed would be negative 5x cubed. Here I have three terms I need to combine. Negative 15 minus 4 is negative 19. And then negative 19 plus 2 would be negative 17x squared. 20x plus 1x is 21x. And then I just have that constant of negative 5 there at the end. All right. If this is too much going on here for you, highly recommend you do box method instead. Create your box. Do three terms across the top, three down the side. Do your lattice multiplication and you would still get this answer regardless of the method that you choose. Okay, just a review of the problems we've done so far. There's four different types here. 
a trinomial times a trinomial, a trinomial and a binomial, distributing a monomial, and then here when that power of two means you gotta write it out twice. I would recommend that you pause the video now and do those four problems to see if you're understanding. Um, you can check these answers with the answer key that's posted in Canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and move on and do an application problem here at the bottom of the page. So it says, express the perimeter of the rectangle as a polynomial in standard form. Uh, find an expression for the area of the figure. Give your answer as a quadratic polynomial. All right, so let's look at our, our shape that we have here. Obviously, it's a rectangle. It tells us that it is. And um, we know, for, you know, properties of a rectangle that if this side is 2x plus 1, this side is also 2x plus 1. If this side is 5x plus 6, this side is also 5x plus 6. And it wants us to find the uh, area and the perimeter. So it gives us the formula for area, which is length times width. So my area is going to be, if this is the length and this is the width, 5x plus 6 times 2x plus 1. Because again, area of a rectangle is length times width. So 5x plus 6 and 2x plus 1. And then now that we uh, know how to multiply, we can go ahead and do that. So 5x times 2x is 10x squared. 5x times 1 is 5x. Then I distribute the 6. 6 times 2x is 12x. And 6 times 1 is 6. I'm going to combine those like terms there in the middle. So I have 10x squared. Then 5x plus 12x is 17x and then plus six. So that is the area of my rectangle. We also are asked to find the perimeter and it reminds you that perimeter is two times the width, two times, I'm sorry, two times the width plus two times the length. And um, another way to think of that is you're just adding up the four sides. So for perimeter, we have two times the width, which the width is two X plus one plus two times the length, which is five X plus six, or you can just add up the four sides. So two times the width plus two times the length. We'll go ahead and distribute the two, the twos on both of those. So two times two X is four X, two times one is two, plus two times five X is 10 X, and two times six is 12. Then I'll combine my like terms. 4x and 10x is 14x. 2 and 12 is 14. So that would be the perimeter there. So area is length times width. Perimeter is 2 times the width plus 2 times the length. Or you just add up the four sides. And then now we're going to answer this question of what is the perimeter if x equals 4? So the perimeter, the expression for that or the equation for that is this that we just found. And we want to know what is the perimeter if x is 4. So that means we're going to take this and we're going to substitute 4 in for x. And then we're going to simplify that. And I believe if you do that, 14 times 4 plus 14, you get 70. So the perimeter would be 70 of this rectangle if x was 4.